Welcome back. Welcome back. You're watching Chartbusters on CNBC TV 18. Now, as promised, let's get straight to the next management skipper. They reported, uh, actually, uh, top line, it was a bit of a miss as well. And we did see some kind of uh, margin compression as well. We have Mr. Devesh Bansal, the director of skipper, who joins us uh, on the phone line to discuss those details. Hi, Mr. Bansal. Thanks so much for joining in, sir. Uh, let's get straight to the point. You know, the last year hasn't been that great a year in terms of profitability. That's the net profit number I'm talking about. You did roughly around 120 crores. Some part of the street is expecting Skipper to deliver a net profit of nearly around 150, 155 crores odd for FY19. Is that possible? Hi, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, just to... Uh just to put things into context, mm. uh, the growth numbers that we are talking about, if you look at the annual growth numbers, mm. uh, that's been in excess of 23% for the company. Mm. And this is for the first time that the company has actually crossed 2,000 crores in revenue as well. That, as far as the revenue is concerned, Mr. Bansal, the net profit has actually declined from about 124 crores to 118 crores, which is why the concern that will it grow to 150, 160 crores by the end of this fiscal, as some part of the street believes. Again, if you look at the uh, profitability numbers from mm. last year, mm. as per IGAP sta uh, standards, it was reported at uh, 111 crores. Mm -hmm. But as per recasting, uh, as per India standards, it was uh, recast as uh, 124 crores. Mm. So there's actually been a growth from 111 to 117 crores this year. Mm. And it's in line with our guidance given uh, in terms of our uh, margin percentage. Mm. Going forward as well, looking at the strong growth that the company is expecting of about 15% this year, okay, we expect okay. the margin percentages to be uh, constant and uh, somewhere close to the numbers that you're projecting. So 2,350 uh, is uh, the revenue number we can look at for this year? Definitely. Okay, all right. So that's clear in terms of the top line. Uh, if you could tell us segmental performance, where exactly are you seeing the growth? I remember... A couple of years ago, you all were talking about expanding your PVC business, right? I mean, you all were expanding out there. So currently, what is the revenue mix? How much comes in from your engineering products? How much comes in from PVC? If you could give us some clarity out there. And going ahead, how is that mix likely to change? So on our engineering products, uh, which makes up about 85% of the company's top line, okay. uh, we are definitely very bullish of 15% uh, growth this year. Uh, we've seen almost 24% growth in the last year mm -hmm. and uh, going forward a 15% growth is definitely in the offing. Okay. Um, on the polymer side uh, we've seen a muted year this year at about a 5 to 7% growth. Okay. However we were trying to strike a balance between maintaining profitability with growth and not really compromising on the profitability too much. So the EBITDA numbers have remained at about 9% but the growth has been muted. Going forward this year we are very very confident of uh, bouncing back to the 40 to 45% growth uh, which was projected last year. Okay. Uh, polymer business as well. Mm. All right, Mr. Bansal, you're sounding pretty confident about individual segments, but overall you've given us a revenue growth of a growth guidance of 15% in FY19. If you could give us a longer term guidance, and I ask this primarily because last year you did 23%, and you've also hired a vector consultancy for process implementation and faster sales. So in that regard, would you go outdo the 15% in future that you've guided for in FY19? We feel that a 15% growth projection is a very safe projection that the companies put out. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is definitely on the cards. During mid-year, if we feel that we are doing better, we are, of course, always going to revise the guidance. But uh, So Vector has been uh, involved for our polymer business, uh, where we see, want to see a higher percentage of growth. Mm -hmm. And it's mo mo mostly on the sales and distribution side, to ramp up our sales and distribution network. Uh, so a combination of both of these will... Uh, hopefully show us better numbers than the guidance that we are currently projecting. Okay, very quickly, Devesh, if you could help us out with uh, what exactly was the working capital days, has it improved? So the working capital remains, uh, days have remained more or less flat. Uh, we had about 180 gross days and mm -hmm. 90 days net level. Okay. Um, and uh, we expect it to remain more or less constant going forward as well. Okay, and quick other details, currently exports as a percentage of your total revenue is, uh, what is it? I remember it used to be around 12 to 15 percent. And if you could help us out with what is the debt in the books? Is it likely to reduce? Is it likely to increase? There's a bit of an increase on interest uh, costs. So I ask you that question. The increase in the interest cost is mostly because of the growing nature of growing size of the operations. Our mm. debt equity has actually reduced from uh, 0.83 to 0.78 this year, which is again <coughs> the lowest in the company's history. Mm. Um, going forward, uh, we expect it to keep on reducing. The mm. uh, long-term debt has remained uh, flat, whereas okay. the uh, short-term debt has increased because of again the growth in operations. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely uh, uh, things are looking positive. Okay. All, All right, right. Uh, Devesh, thanks. thanks so much for joining in and giving us uh, those details. Well, Mangla, I mean, I'm just going back to the point that you were making in the break. Seasonality and briefs, uh, what was that? Uh, so TT Limited was the one who, who, who joined us and he said that, you know, seasonality increases in the monsoons, whereas uh, uh, Lakshan Dashi said it's in the summer, summer season, food. so we'll keep an eye out on that. But before we wrap up on Chartbusters, just watch out for the rupee 68.1, 68.2 was the recent uh, low, so we'll watch out for that. As we do that, uh, here's a buy from us on Chartbusters. Stay tuned, Trading Art comes up next.